Um, but so there was a lot of renewal happening in the company at the time, mainly Gilbert arriving. There was a big gap in the middle of the, the company. So we were all the, you know, little sort of court of ballet people and there was this chasm of soloist ranks that just exited and then there were some principles on the top so and you know Maynard's policy was always to push up the talent she wasn't into you know hanging around and you know paying your dues so I mean I joined the company in 83 I was a Corifei in 84 I was a soloist in 85 I was a senior artist in 86 and then I was a principal in 89 so and Stephen and you know he, he had the same trajectory except he was a principal in 87 so you know we were really fast tracked through the company and you know I was doing principal roles in my third year in the company so it was it was an extraordinary time and I look back on it now and think god how did I think I could do that but I guess we had the opportunities and we worked really hard, you know, Maina was a taskmaster and she, you know, she was relentless pushing us to be what we could be and and I really appreciate that now and I think, you know, I look at some of the dancers that join the company now and some of them have had that same trajectory, I mean, you look at Cheng Wu Guo or Ako Kondo, I mean, you know, every year they were promoted and, you know, Ako's only been in the company since 2010, so in six years she's a principal, which is exactly what happened with Steve, so it's not that... I don't think it happens now. It's just, I think we were lucky that there was that that opportunity. It was an evolutionary period, yeah. wasn't it? Really, with so much happening. And and I think, I mean, what, for me, the biggest, I mean, two things happened in my first year. I danced um, in Graham Murphy's Beyond Twelve, and I yes. did the young boy in that. And um, I was the fourth understudy, and all of the people ahead of me like dropped like dominoes and I ended up stepping in because um, of injury and illness or whatever and it turned out that just so happened that Paul de Masson who was the sort of teenage one and Kelvin who was the sort of older one we all had this ridiculously honky nose and um, we all sort of looked as if we were sort of fitted in a group so but yeah um, and that was I, for my first big break and then I think the second thing was um, in 84 which was the next year we did Main of Sleeping Beauty and um, Lizzie Tui and I were sort of thrown together through um, injury and whatever um, to dance Bluebird together and after that, um, Rosemary Campbell, who was then the president of the Ballet Society, um, suggested that we went to Moscow, to the International Ballet Competition in Moscow. And that sort of was, I guess, the beginning of you know, the, the career that I ended up having because you know, we went to Moscow and um, I won a medal and... Um, a bronze medal in Moscow, yeah. an international ballet competition. We, we scooped the pools because... Um, Kelvin and Marilyn went the first time. They won silver medals. Um, Danny Radojevic went to the next competition. He won a gold medal. So the only one we didn't have was bronze, so that was mine to get. And, uh, <laughs> so we, we got, you know, we, we've ended up getting all of those um, medals. But it was, it was really fantastic because when Danny won gold, which was amazing, I mean, such an incredible achievement, he came back and basically he went back to doing the court of ballet in The Merry Widow. And um, Mayna knew that that was a really bad situation and he ended up leaving the company and spent most of his career in America dancing with American Ballet Theatre. So she was determined when we got back, no matter how well or work badly we did, that it was going to be celebrated. So there was a big media sort of um, thing around that. And, um, and so it really opened up this opportunity. And then from then on, in 86, 87 and 88, Lizzie and I went back to this, what was the Soviet Union and danced in various companies around Russia.